<clears throat> Hello. Uh, today is uh, the 5th of October uh, 2023, and we'll talk about two architects, Maya Lin and Dan Hanganu, both uh, connected with this day, uh, October 5th. Uh, Maya Lin was born on October 5th, while uh, Dan Hanganu died on October 5th. Uh, let's, uh, let's read a little bit about her. Uh, Maya Ying Lin was born on October 5th, 1959. Is an American designer and sculptor. Interestingly, <laughs> she, is not she is not considered an architect, although she is. In 1981, while an undergraduate at Yale University, she achieved national recognition when she won a national design competition for the planned Vietnam Veterans Memorial in Washington, DC. Lin has designed numerous memorials, public and private buildings, but she is not um, considered an architect, surprise, surprise, landscapes and sculptures. Although she is best known for historical memorials, she is also known for environmentally themed works, which often address environmental decline. Interesting, environmental decline. According to Lin, she draws inspiration from the architecture of nature, but believes that nothing she creates can match its beauty. We can only appreciate her modesty. This is Maya Lin. Uh, and um, here she is uh, awarded by uh, President Obama. You see on the right, uh, famous actor, Robert uh, Redgrave. Uh, I hope one day you will be awarded too by someone. Now, the Vietnam Veterans Memorial uh, um, Washington, in Washington, which she, she won a prestigious competition, and uh, it was built. Uh, it was not a small accomplishment at all because it was a very famous uh, competition uh, charged politically uh, and uh, with uh, many important firms uh, participating in the competition. And here she was, a second year student winning and she won with a scheme which was abstract and pure and poetical. So this can only be an encouragement that quality could prevail. We, we, we only have to, 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 to keep trying. So this is the veteran memorial that um, uh, she built in Washington, DC. And uh, uh, you know, it, it, this work of a, of a second year student is, uh, is astonishing because of its uh, maturity and because of its abstractness and purity. And she didn't make concessions. She didn't make uh, compromises. And uh, uh, we can only applaud the jury that was inspired enough to choose this work. Uh, here they are, probably the two men on the left and right of her. And there you look, she, she was 20 years old or something like this. No, a second year, your student. And uh, here we have, uh, you know, uh, probably a prestigious jury that understood the essence of her project. And um, what else can I say? This is an inspiration and should be an inspiration to any young architect, in fact, to any architect, you know, to keep trying to dream and to act uh, uh, um, uh, accordingly. It's not easy. It's very easy to get discouraged, but um, uh, I think we keep, we have to keep trying. And this was her project. I mean, you know, you would say it's it's almost nothing here. You know, uh, I mean, you know, here we are. You see, she 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 had the entry number one thousand twenty six. So there were so many entries. It was a very important uh, competition, and this second year student with these uh, sketches, because how else could we call them? One. So, you know, sometimes at least poetry wins, quality wins, even when, uh, you know, uh, expressed um, uh, schematically or uh, minimalistically. 
I, I truly am very grateful to the jury that was uh, enlightened enough, inspired enough to see the quality of this work. It's very possible she didn't even um, uh, care to respect all the requirements of the program. I'm almost sure. I mean, I, I don't see numbers here. I don't see, you know, technical drawings. It's just one page with some words, her thoughts, which I cannot read. And there's these very nice, uh, you know, uh, colored pencils or pastel drawings. And another very, very, uh, uh, you know, minimal uh, line drawing. And that's it. And she won. So again and again, you know, this project, uh, together with the project for the opera in Sydney by John Woodson, demonstrate that it is possible in certain conditions when the planets align properly and when the jury is inspired and generous, it is possible that, that formidable works could come into being and could win. We only have to try. So in essence, it's just this V excavated into the earth and on, 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 on the sides, the two sides of this V are inscribed the names of those who died in the terrible war uh, in Vietnam. Unfortunately, human beings do not learn. We are notorious for, for not learning. So right now, at this very moment, there is another deadly war in Ukraine. So, but we, we, we still have to try and we still have to dream the way Maya Lin did. I, I like this drawing very much. I'm sure that Brunkush, the Romanian sculptor, would have loved it too, because he has some, some drawings, uh, again, very, very, uh, subtly poetical and with just a few lines where he suggests, you know, uh, the flight of some birds. Here we see the purity of feeling. This is what we see in this drawing. It is a vision expressed modestly, poetically and suggestively. And that's enough. Uh, practically, I think she worked on her project. I mean, I mean in terms of uh, labor, <laughs> She probably did her project in half an hour. I mean, look at this here. You know, uh, maybe it took her a little bit of more time to just type. I imagine it was typed that page, but the drawings themselves, she, she probably worked, uh, you know, for a short time. And when I compare <clears throat> this work with a very, very, uh, you know, uh, labor intensive works in the schools of architecture where you have to labor day and night and put dimensions and, uh, you know, calculate and add and subtract and read, you know, uh, project uh, themes uh, with countless pages and try to satisfy all the requirements. And look at this second year student who won a prestigious competition and built what she what she envisioned just just with a purity of feeling and thought truly please dear students or architects take inspiration from the work by Maya Lin don't get confused by you know countless pages of uh, information and requirements and this and that and this and that. And in the end, the, wor the work is without any joy, without any pleasure, without any inspiration. Look at Maya Lin, what she did. And it was built. Bravo to her. Twenty years old. <laughs> She herself was probably stunned. I mean, truly, bravo to her. And those who refuse to not dream. Isn't it sad? I mean, you know, I'm sure Putin didn't see this image, but I'm sure he saw other images with, uh, you know, uh, 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 soldiers uh, who died and soldiers who ruined their health and their bodies and so on. 
How do you explain that war is still possible in our world? How do you explain it when we could live when we could live in peace on this earth? I, I found this picture like this uh, on the web. I didn't create this, um, you know, uh, this image. On the left, of course, is uh, Fondation Louis Vuitton uh, by uh, Frank Gehry, and on the right, um, Maya Lin with her Vietnam uh, Memorial. They are very different works, uh, indeed. But you cannot say that one is, um, I mean, you cannot say that the work of the student is inferior to the work of the mature uh, Frank Gehry. No, it's not. It's a different vision. Uh, and um, the idea is to, to, to create excellence in architecture and to aspire towards excellence in whatever way you feel like expressing yourself. Apparently, you know, she, I see her here working actually on the, uh, I mean, physically uh, on, the, on, the, on, on her work here in, in, in Washington. Isn't it beautiful? I think it is very beautiful. So she wrote, I saw the Vietnam Veterans Memorial not as an object placed into the earth, but as a cut in the earth that has been then polished like a geode. Um, or here she says, art is very tricky because it's what you do for yourself. It's much harder for me to make those works than the monuments or the architecture. Well, she practices both. She does both art. By the way, who, do you know who this man here with the mustache is? He's a very important um, in Israeli Canadian architect, Moshe Safdi, who also at 25 won the competition to build the Montreal Habitat 1967, in 1967. Not much older than Maya Lin. A lot of my works deal with a passage, which is about time. I don't see anything that I do as a static object in space. It has to exist as a journey in time. Well, architects are obsessed by space, but some of them do not forget time. Vito Acconci, who was an, uh, an artist who became an architect, said that uh, uh, architecture is actually about time, not about space. Well, we can think about it and debate about it. All my work is much more peaceful than I am. An interesting statement because it's, 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 it says that actually she's not peaceful. She is uh, maybe even tormented like many artists, like many architects too. But, but she aspired towards peace. And that's why she said all my work is much more peaceful than I am. I left science, then I went into art, but I approached things very analytically. I choose to pursue both art and architecture as completely separate fields rather than merging them. Maya Lin. I deliberately did not read anything about the Vietnam War because I felt the politics of the war eclipsed what happened to the veterans. The politics were irrelevant to what this memorial was. Very nice, because, because she, she wanted to have a, a first-hand feeling about what it means to die in the war. And all the other data, you know, numbers and so on, didn't matter. And her project showed it. Even though I build buildings and I pursue my architecture, I pursue it as an artist. I deliberately keep a tiny studio. I don't want to be an architectural firm. I want to remain an artist. Now, an open air peace chapel at this college, 1988, 1989. Very nice. Um, what can we say? Very, very nice. Yes. Pure, um, delicately primitive, if I can say so, but also robustly. Uh, primitive, delicate and primitive at the same time. It's not an easy thing to do. Uh, she is an excellent artist as well. Uh, you could say a landscape artist or a landscape architect 
or an architect artist or an artist architect she merges them even even though she said that she doesn't merge them and here you have uh, you know in this uh, open air uh, chapel if you are to call it so uh, young people like you uh, uh, not intimidated by religious dogma or uh, i don't know by what it's just the beauty of the landscape the beauty of the sky above the beauty of the land and the togetherness facing each other which matters a lot I mean, you look at the stones, gray as they are, and heavy as they are, and robust as they are, and then you, you look at the fragile flowers near the stones. I mean, it moves me very much, you know, the vicinity of rock or stone and flower. And in a way, life is like this. It has both. Sorry, I don't know what I did here. Oh, no, I, I come back to the memorial, but I don't know why. That picture is probably um, misplaced, sorry. Eclipse time. She did this at uh, the Pennsylvania Station, Penn Station in New York City, 1989-1995. Uh, it's, a, it's a sculptural, well, it's an installation within the Penn Station in New York City. Po probably very, uh, you know, cryptical, esoteric, abstract. In a in a in a very busy uh, place in in New York, in a very busy city that is in New York City, and she's also I mean she's not only an artist and an architect, but she's also a philosopher, and because she thinks and feels about time, her work is about time. Here, you know, it's 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 called Eclipsed Time, 1989-1995. I don't know the. The details of the work. I just uh, present her works, uh, you know, rather, you know, uh, uh, kind of like a, a net memoir, because I want to provoke you to, to, to keep searching if you are interested in her work. And today is very possible to, to have access to a lot of information about any work uh, on, 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 on the web. So I'm not going to read this text now, but again, if you are interested in the eclipsed time work by Maya Lin, you can you can have access even to this image because that's where I took it from. And where uh, see where the work is? It's on the ceiling actually. And you know the people, you know they 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 go to the trains. They come from the you know descending from the trains. It's it's a you know very very public uh, and busy uh, space, and above them stands this uh, artwork by this uh, I would say very profound uh, um, sculptor installation artist and architect and landscape architect as well. Women's table. I love this work by 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 Maya Lin. It's a women, women's table at Yale University where she studied from 1990-1993. Let's read a little bit about it. A fountain dedicated to the women at Yale University. Inscribed upon it is a spiral that traces the presence of women. Counting women enrolled each year to Yale from when they were not expected to be to the present. Uh, yes, initially it was not, uh, you know, a university open to women. Uh, they came later, and this is an homage to them. And it's 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 a, it's a it's a beautiful work. It's abstract, uh, but it, it it has the spiral, which you know could refer to Jean Baptiste Jean Vico's conception of time. But it was not just his conception that time is a spiral. And uh, uh, we are going to see also just a second. I mean, the the the, the spiral on 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 water is uh, uh, amplifies the, this feeling of uh, of uh, of, uh, of flowing, 
you know, of uh, of, uh, of the fragility of, of life in a way, but also a suggested center because there it, there is a center, but it's a little bit off an a, an off center, and then there is the spiraling, which refers to uh, yes to time again, but not linear time, not chronos, rather kairos, because perhaps you know the. The Greeks had two gods for time. One was Kronos for chronological time, for linear time. And the other one was Kairos, who was the god of cyclical time, qualitative time. And I see more this work dedicated to Kairos than to Kronos. Although if I remember well, on the edge of the, of the fountain, there are inscribed some years, yes, or the number or the number of the students, the female students that were uh, accepted um, at, at, at Yale. Very nice work. A fountain dedicated to the female students at Yale University. And you see, she didn't try to mimic the buildings nearby. This is an abstract work, a modern work, and it sits quite well in a campus which has all kinds of buildings, some modern, some less modern, like this, but it's fine. And this moves me beyond measure because here we see the, the, the contribution of the, of the spectators, of the audience, so to speak, of the students, uh, who left their bicycles there and who, um, you know, uh, attached uh, inscriptions uh, spontaneously written and uh, informally uh, written, and then the flowers. And so it's a beautiful, I think, conjunction between art, abstract art, and, uh, uh, you know, the, the manifestation of life uh, in its uh, in its um, colorful and uh, unpretentious purity, beautiful. So it is an artwork which welcomes interventions. You know, uh, it's not an art that you know sits. Uh, within a, you know, a, an expensive frame and then there is a fence around it and you cannot even approach it. This is an art which is open to uh, uh, the interventions of whoever wants to uh, add something inspired by it. In a way, it's, it's the, the, the spiral of justice. Finally, justice was made to the female students because initially, as I said, they were not accepted at, at Yale. But in the end, justice was made. The Wave Field, another work by uh, Maya Lin. This one also very interesting, I would say. Land art. You can imagine winning the competition for the, the Vietnam Memorial you know, gave her a lot of opportunities to do other works. Maya Lin sculpture at Storm King Art Center in Orange County. So she does seem to like to work with the earth, with nature. But there is a, a contribution that is dynamic, wave-like. The wave field at Ann Arbor in Michigan. Uh, Ann Arbor is a very important university in the United Sta States. And here she is. 
Now, Novartis Research Center, together with Toshiko Mori, Toshiko Mori is a Japanese architect who uh, teaches and practices in the United States, and they work together for this uh, building. Uh, it's a building, Novartis Research Center. Um, I don't know very well what to think about it. It's, uh, it's, 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 it's a good building. It's a good building because it has this uh, second layer, the the embroidered facade. You know, I mean, if you compare this building with the one on the left, you see that here is a different sensibility. And the different sensibility is uh, um, illustrated through this, uh, uh, you know, ornamental second skin. It's a veil. That's what it is. And I think uh, the veil in architecture today is a very important theme. And I feel like making a presentation about the, the veil in architecture. What is the virtue of this veil? Well, the building becomes more sensitive, uh, less uh, simplistically readable. Behind it is a building that maybe is not so... Uh, uh, fantastically, uh, you know, surprising. But because of the, the enclosure, the second skin, the ornamental uh, veil, I think um, uh, there is a different sensibility all of a sudden that it, it advocates and it presents to the viewers. Inside, you know, the building is as it is. It's not a bad building, but uh, we had seen such buildings. This is a pizza happy place. Uh, the, the word pizza was uh, crossed out and then this is a happy place. Anyway, this is advertising. You see here how, how the second skin, the, the architectural veil came into being, which also as opposed to the structure of the building behind uh, ad advocates and manifests, um, you know, uh, uh, a changed geometry or uh, an aleatory, uh, uh, you know, uh, how to say, aleatory uh, uh, assemblage of these uh, fragments uh, together and not, not in the way the structure of the building be behind is. So in a way, there are two systems. Sorry, this other building is something else. This is a, a museum. Uh, uh, for, I think for Chinese art in Chinatown in New York City, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, my, my presentation here is a little bit deficient. I apologize. But I like very much the fact that she, she was not afraid to leave the, the space without so-called finishes. She was not afraid to, 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 to allow the building to breathe with its truth. Uh, and... Uh, this shows a superior sense of aesthetics and a superior sense of the ethics of architecture. You know, many architects just hide uh, away, um, you know, uh, uncomfortable things, but that's not what she does and did. And uh, I, I think she chose correctly. Here it is a work I think uh, done in Sweden. Uh, look at the little house here uh, and then, uh, I find it very inspired and inspiring. You know, I, I I don't know exactly, I don't know its symbolism. I don't know why she did what she did, but it, it seems to sit very well here uh, on this, um, uh, you know, rather large plot of land in Sweden. It's mysterious. The Regio Lynch Chapel, this work, to be honest with you, uh, doesn't impress me so much as um, the other works, maybe because uh, here there is more architecture in the sense of a limiting architecture. I remember what Wolf Prick said that uh, if you only think of architecture, you will, you will only get architecture. Somehow here is, uh, is, is a little bit too much architecture. But, you know, it, 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 I, I, I wish the building uh, surprised us a little more through maybe even uh, an architectural veil or, or I don't know. Uh, it's, it's a little bit um, 
um, predictable uh, for me, but uh, anyway, that's what she built, myelin. So what is its function? It's a chapel, another chapel. I prefer, to be honest with you, the, the first chapel we saw by her in the open air with those uh, rocks, those stones um, in, a, in a, you know, sensitive, uh, a little bit imperfect circle. This one is a little bit too architectural for my taste and too perfect. At the heart of the design is the abstracted image of a boat or arc that is constructed out of wood and forms the main body of the chapel. It is both a quiet reminder of the motto of the children's defense fund, Dear Lord, be good to me. The sea is so wide and my boat is so small. And the contextual design decision that allows for the introduction of a modern boat-like form into a setting that includes numerous historical log cabins. I don't know. I mean, the building, the way I see it, without reading the text, doesn't truly really evoke to me, you know, a boat that is so small. The building is actually rather large and imposing. Anyway, now this is a kind of an interesting work by her. Uh, a little bit, um, I don't, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's. Uh, it, I, I like the fact that she left wood untreated as it is, and then uh, I don't know. I mean, the the, the modern intervention at the roof. Um, it's done probably functionally very well, but uh, I, I, I'm not very sure if it, um, if it. Um, if it has the, the connection with the building underneath uh, in, in best terms. I, I, I feel that somehow at the top is a little bit too harshly definite, is too, is too defined somehow compared to what is underneath where the wood is alive, is an organic matter and uh, its imperfections evoke a different sensibility. That's what I feel. I already saw an image, I, it was probably mis, misplaced and I apologize, the Museum of Chinese Art in New York City, which is this one. Um, now I like this very much, even if maybe, or maybe especially because she didn't uh, try to modify it uh, dramatically, maybe she did almost nothing here. And, 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 and this is an art to know where to stop. The box house. This is a house, a villa. Uh, yeah, why not? But uh, it's not as poetical as uh, some other works by her. This is a, uh, another landscape art that she did, uh, or land art. And that was it. So let's wish he, let's wish her happy birthday. And let's, uh, if you want, let's uh, let's uh, talk a little bit uh, about her.